Hello and welcome to the Voices of Women, sponsored by the Bristol County Commission on the Status of Women. I'm your host, Gail Forts from the YWCA Southeastern Massachusetts. And today we're gonna let you know about a brand new project that's really exciting called Lighting the Way. So I wanna thank our panel and our guests for being here today. That will introduce themselves and we'll talk a little bit about the project. So Sarah, if we could start with Thanks, you. Thanks, Gail. I'm Sarah Rose, Vice President of Education and Programs at the New Bedford Whaling Museum. Thank you, Sarah, for being here. Um, Chrissy Bascom, volunteer in, for various New Bedford organizations and um, obsessed by women's roles. <laughs> Thank you, and I'm Ann O'Leary. I'm the Emily Bourne Fellow uh, at the Whaley Museum. The Emily Bourne Fellow is a, uh, a research position that is at the Whaley Museum in honor of Emily Bourne, who actually donated the Jonathan Bourne Building and the Lagoda to the Whaling uh, Museum. So I'm the lead researcher for the project. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for taking time to be with us here today to talk about the project. So, Sarah, could you introduce what it is that you're doing and then we can go into Chrissy about where this great idea came from and what inspired you to do that? Absolutely. The New Bedford Whaling Museum is spearheading a project that will look at the impact of women from the South Coast over time. It's called Lighting the Way Historic Women of the South Coast. Okay. This summer, we'll launch a walking trail in the downtown district. It will start at the Whaling Museum, but it will go as far um, uptown as the Roachstone's Duff House, mm -hmm. over to the Nathaniel and Polly Johnson House, the birthplace of Hetty Green, and then back down to the Siemens Bethel. Visitors will be able to pick up a map at the Whaling Museum and the National Park and other places that will have information about the women who are on the trail. There will mm -hmm. be about 25 of them as well as information about the historic sites. We'll also have an app that will be GPS um, activated. So as you're walking along the route, it will bring up information about the women and also be supported with video and audio. The idea is that we want this project to be really attractive to all generations mm -hmm. so that right. people will access it however they would like to. Oh, wow. That's Amazing. Sounds the, like a big project. Um, project also will have a website that um, mm -hmm. visitors will be able to use, and that will have lots more information about the project, about the organizations involved in the project, as well as um, many, many more women from the entire South Coast area. Mm -hmm. The real emphasis mm -hmm. of the project is. Um, introducing curriculum into the New Bedford schools and schools in the area to really think about ways to amplify history by including stories of women. Mm -hmm. We're really hopeful that when teachers are talking about Frederick Douglass, they're also talking about Martha Bailey Briggs. Uh, Martha Bailey Briggs was one of the first African Americans to graduate from the New Bedford High School. Mm -hmm. And in 1866, she led 40 teachers to the South to teach freed African American children. We're also hoping when they talk about Henry Huddleston Rogers that they're also talking about Hetty Green. Hetty Green was known as the Witch of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. She was the wealthiest woman in the world when she um, died, um, uh, giving away over $100 million to her children. All of this leads up to 2020, which is the 100th anniversary of the ratification of uh, women's right to vote, the 19th Amendment, and the project will unveil uh, public art within the city to show the effect um, of the amplification of women. The only criteria for being included in the project is that you, um, that, the, that the person profiled has had a significant impact in the area and that they're historic. They are no longer living. Okay. We put out a call for names um, using multiple sources, radio, newspapers, letters to community organizations and churches. And so we have a diverse list of about 80 people and we're still looking for more. Okay. Um, the idea really came to us through Chrissy Bascom, and I'll let turn it over to her to talk a little bit about how we how we got started. How we got started. Well, it was a, it was sort of a dream of mine for a long time, mm -hmm. and my interest in women's contributions to history goes back some time. Um, being a founder of the one of the founders of the our sister school and also the Women's Fund. Um, and I wondered where the stories of these women were, and and um, so much of New Bedford right now is 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 run by women and um, certainly a lot of it was run by women when men were off whaling um, so I um, started delving into it and trying to get 
people to write a book about it, and nobody was interested. And then I read Down at the Docks, mm -hmm. which was a book about the uh, New Bedford whaling, uh, excuse me, fishing industry, that had this curious little chapter in it called the Petticoat Society. And Toby Baker and I got obsessed about finding out about the Petticoat Society, which was um, maybe a bit apocryphal, but it was a group of women in um, Nantucket who ran the island while the men were off whaling. And because of the uh, War of 1812, the, the whaling industry moved to New Bedford, and so did the Petticoat Society. And allegedly, okay. the author interviewed the last secretary of the Petticoat Society. Um, so we started with the idea of a book and really found out that we wanted something much more interactive mm -hmm. and um, diverse. And so this is really a community um, partnership. Uh, we've assembled 30, at least 30 women and probably more, um, again, in this um, desire to amplify history. And um, I... I I've got a lot of quotes from Time Magazine, who has who really been following this rise of women's prominence in the world. And one of the ones that sticks in my mind is, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Mm -hmm. And we need to see yeah. more women represented both in history books and uh, names of streets, buildings, statues, wall art. Mm -hmm. And um, this is from the latest edition it's of Time. It said, we want people to feel comfortable with women's names and images as much as we are with men's names and recognize that they are of equal importance. So oh, we, want, we, we want to find out all about the stories of these women, and that's why we have our Emily Bourne Fellow. Oh, okay. yes. Well, thank you so, for doing that. That's okay. really, really well, wonderful oh, to have that. Oh, the most important part, I forgot. This was a dream. And I did try to convince people to do it. And finally, I had lunch with James Russell and Sarah Rose. And they said, sure, let's do it. All right. Well, that's great. Well, that's wonderful. Whaling Museum. That's the most important part. Yeah. That. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, Anne, you're working on this project as a fellow. So why yes. don't you tell us how exciting I'm sure this sure. must be Sure. This is, this is such an honor and a privilege to uh, work on this project with Christy and Sarah and 10 other uh, researchers as well, okay. along with an mm -hmm. editor. Um, but we've brought about three Dartmouth women who have been mm -hmm. included and completed uh, for the project. Yeah. So we'll I can give you a little sneak peek. Uh, we're going to give you a sneak peek. All right, great. And uh, the first is Kathleen Ryan Comiskey Roberts, who actually wrote a children's history of Dartmouth that is still mm -hmm. used today in the Dartmouth Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And um, she was of Irish ancestry. She uh, was born in Dartmouth, was educated here, went to Framingham State, and then uh, BU for her masters, but really her her longest lasting uh, work has been this children's book. It's mm -hmm. been it's used so much that it was revised in 1976 again in 2010. Um, it includes Dartmouth's first inhabitants, its first white settlers, um, its industries mm -hmm. like um, w um, for instance uh, its salt works and also its shipbuilding. And the really beautiful thing about Catherine, Kathleen Ryan Comiskey was that she included 11 students as illustrators, mm -hmm. and they're all named on the first that's page. Great. So well, what a great. testament to this woman that mm -hmm. she had such relationships with her students that she included them in, mm -hmm. in her first book. And she went on, uh, she taught in Dartmouth for 20 years, then she moved on to Raynham. Mm -hmm. uh, but she was also a labor leader in teachers unions, in the Dartmouth Teachers Union, in the Raynham Teachers Union. So. Um, this was a community, um, a, a community member recommended uh, this woman, and it was such a wonderful addition to this project. Mm -hmm. So when you do it, give you like a little sample. So you'd be writing something about her, and then someone would be able to see something relative to her, either on the website or through Yes, curriculum. on the website. She will be featured on the website, okay. whereas there is no location to link with uh, link her to the oh, downtown location. Okay. But she's definitely going to be... Um, on the website, and her profile's already completed. Oh, and wonderful. Maybe I can just interject on the app, if you're in Dartmouth and mm -hmm. you're interested to know about women in Dartmouth, you'll be able to go in, and because it's GPS activated, it will oh, pull up the women that are included in the project. So while there isn't a formal walking trail in Dartmouth planned mm -hmm. as of yet, we'll still have Dartmouth women as part of the app. Okay, well that's good to know for people that want well, to be able to see that. Well this is going to be in, invaluable to historical societies mm -hmm. and um, you know just all the, uh, all the towns around here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because I know that there's similar 
trails in Boston, New yeah. York yes. that you based and mm -hmm. went to look at to kind of see yes. how they do, how they have their trails and how it interacts with people, whether not just people from here, but from other communities mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Yes. Right. So that's, that's really great that people would be able to do that and be able to, mm -hmm. now will they be able to sort on the website if they're looking for someone in particular and find Absolutely. where to find them? It will be listed by um, time period, um, okay. occupation, ethnic background. So there'll be all sorts of ways that you can access the information. So if you're looking at it for mm -hmm. just a time period, if you mm -hmm. only want to know about the 1860s, you can sort that way. There'll be lots of um, uh, those capabilities within the site. to do that. So there'll be how hmm. many total? Because I know you mentioned 80 originally right. and looking at 25, or is it open-ended? You're still collecting names? So there's currently 45. 45 are completed. Are okay. completed. There's about 80 on the list. 80 on the list. And the list okay. will just continue to grow and we'll um, continue to work on names. Some of the women are more difficult to research. There is, just isn't a lot of primary information. source information. So this spring we'll have two UMass Dartmouth students who will I be see. working to go, and Anne stem some of this as well, to work on oral family histories and to mm -hmm. go out and meet with people's families to try and get more information oh, okay. on some so of the women great in, the, to be able to do that. in the in the project. Mm -hmm. okay. So how do you see this relating with the schools and with curriculum? Do you see students coming in on the trail? Do you see people going into the schools? A variation of that? Definitely all of the above and the trail is what we're hoping will be a big hook that okay. students mm -hmm. will come to the downtown walk the trail and that that will be part of the conversation that takes place in the schools yeah, um, mm -hmm. and and there'll be printed material as well that will go to the schools that will be used by teachers to again like just become familiar with the stories the way we're familiar with the stories mm -hmm. so that they just very naturally integrated into conversation throughout the day throughout right. the year okay so I think that's important like what you mentioned and what Chrissy mm -hmm. you know mentioned that we only hear about the men in yeah. history books or I mean people might be familiar with Martha Briggs as an example because yeah. there's an educational club there's women that are involved in that mm -hmm. she has a house you know in New Bedford that they talk about but really hearing those stories I think it's inspi inspiring for people mm -hmm. to yes. be able to learn maybe things that they didn't know or Hetty Green it's you know popular yes. so most mm -hmm. people yes. know that but they might not know of some of the other names. I will say even just being familiar with the women in the project because of Anne's research I find inspiration mm -hmm. I'll be thinking oh well what would you know Martha Bailey Briggs do in this case. <laughs> yeah. and the other part I find right. really fascinating is to think about Martha Bailey Briggs who was really involved with um, teaching um, children in the South, and she was very involved with the Matilda Minor School. Oh, Matilda right. Miners opened a school in Washington, D.C. prior to the Civil War, and even Frederick Douglass said it was too dangerous, mm -hmm. and um, in fact, they did try and burn down Matilda Miner's house. Mm -hmm. Rachel Howland, who's a well-known um, philanthropist mm -hmm. and 50-year minister for the Quaker Church, was a benefactor for Matilda Miner and a close oh. friend of hers. Mm -hmm. But Martha Bailey Briggs, when she was teaching in Newport, Rhode Island, and that's really where she became known to mm -hmm. people as being this really dynamic teacher, um, she was working for George Downing, who didn't want his kids sent to a segregated school. That's Martha, uh, sorry, um, Matilda Minor called on Martha Bailey Briggs to come and teach at her school. Her father, Martha Bailey Briggs' father, thought it was too dangerous, so she ended up not going. Uh. But it occurs to me that it may be Rachel Howland, Martha Bailey Briggs, two <laughs> women living in the same community, that it may have been Rachel Howland who had said to, to mm. Matilda mm. Minor, True. you should call on Martha Bailey yeah. Briggs. So these right. connections between these you know, disparate groups in New Bedford that come together for these incredible clauses. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of benevolence in New Bedford in in the 19th century is really mm -hmm. extraordinary. So as we tie these tie the links together, it will be really fascinating mm -hmm. to see what we come up with. Great. And it's great, I end up you know, relating to people that I didn't, didn't know all that well because of this project, mm -hmm. uh, finding out relatives of mm -hmm. theirs. Or they'll say, oh, I have a, you know, my aunt did something. Um, or I just right. found out yeah. that the uh, friend of mine's uh, grandmother, or great-grandmother, wrote uh, Stella Dallas and mm -hmm. now Voyagers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and um, so we, it's fun to research her, and sure. it is great to read Anne's profiles. It's really they are. inspiring. They are, they are. The ones that I yeah. read are very inspiring. And, very and I just can imagine that the, the girls of New Bedford and the boys will gain so much um, sense of possibility mm -hmm. um, that these women, f women from New Bedford were so successful. Mm -hmm. And they run from being confectioners mm -hmm. to 
you know, sister sailors. Sister, sister, sister oh God, I can't forget yep. that. Yeah, sister <laughs> sailors. Union labor organizers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, philanthropists. Um, all sorts what, of things. All sorts. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, yeah. you know, you just didn't hear those Doctors. stories. People weren't talking yeah. about it. You know, women just as they always do, right. a lot of times they just do their work. Yeah. Right. They're not looking for accolades, they run you know, under the radar screen, mm -hmm. and you know, we're not hearing that. So I think to celebrate those stories, get them out to yeah. the public yes. is, is yeah. so important, because I think you know, we're yeah. all gonna learn something about the women, like you said, even the women yes. that we know, yeah. mm -hmm. you know yes. by hearing these stories, yes. and I think it's really, really great. Um, Anne, anything else yes. that you're, you uh, well, these we stories? Well, we have a second Dobbin Oh, woman. please tell us about her. Jenny Horn, um, who was an activist, a true activist in the 60s, um, African American and Cape Verdean descent, mm -hmm. and she actually was born in Dartmouth, graduated from Dartmouth High School, mm -hmm. married um, an army lieutenant, and went to Germany for some time. And already the activism started in Germany because she um, started youth groups for U.S. soldiers, uh, children, and also German children. But when she returned, she actually settled in New Bedford. So here's an, ex okay. an example of a Dartmouth woman who settled in New Bedford and really gave to New Bedford as a foot soldier in the war on poverty programs. She worked for On Board. She worked her way up um, in On Board, which actually was a um, um, anti-poverty community mm -hmm. action agency that administered um, the mm -hmm the funds for the federal uh, programs at the time in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So um, she actually worked her way up from being a secretary for On Board and then a contact worker, which meant she did the interviewing and the uh, making sure that, that, um, that the funds were used appropriately for the, the for right people. And then she became the director of one of the neighborhood centers of On Board for the uh, West Central Community Center. So she went on and worked for the Model Cities program in the 60s in New Bedford as well, which was, again, another anti-poverty program that worked to uh, look at <coughs> racism and negligence. And she worked, um, she was such an activist, she worked for public school reorganization, for public housing development, for community wow. relations, improving community relations between police and uh, the community. And in the 60s, having grown up in New Bedford, it was, it, there were turbulent times. Mm -hmm. So Jenny Horn is just, um, you know, a Dartmouth woman who, who saw a need in New Bedford and, and answered the need. That is and her amazing. son has been in contact with Lee Blake, talking about you know. Oh really? And oh, is great. she? He's looking to get additional images of her. Oh, so. that's, that's really great when you have great. someone that you can talk to to get mm -hmm. you know additional information about that. So then I think you had one other one. We do. We have a, another one who might be familiar, especially to the Azorians among oh, us, okay. uh, Mary Vermet, um, mm. who was a force for um, all <laughs> things Portuguese. <laughs> Uh, she was born in Dartmouth. Her father was a, uh, a dairy farmer, and she helped deliver milk in Dartmouth for him at growing up. She did go to a, a Lady of Montcalm's school in New Bedford, oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. but um, she and which has really strengthened her ties to um, all things Portuguese and Azorian. Mm -hmm. She went on to Salve Regina um, College, and then she was the first Portuguese American woman to receive a doctorate from Harvard in Portuguese studies, mm -hmm. and. She actually taught, at, she came back and taught at Dartmouth High School for many years. As a matter of fact, two retired Dartmouth High School teachers read her profile that I wrote and gave me some feedback mm. and added some oh, detail. Wow, that's good. So, um, great. She, and later in her life, she actually then switched from Dartmouth High School to the academic level, where she worked at SMU mm -hmm. and then at, at UMass Dartmouth, um, eventually helping to form the Center for Portuguese Studies and Culture. Um, okay. In, at, at UMass Dartmouth. But really, in the later uh, part of her life, the last 10 years, she worked closely. She was the first president of the Azorian Maritime Heritage Society, which began a partnership with the Whaling Museum. Mm -hmm. So she really um, became very involved with those two organizations. And she wrote, a, she helped to write a grant for the Whaling Museum, a $500,000 grant that was received from the Portuguese government to start the Whaleman, uh, the Azorian, Azorian Whaleman, Whaleman Gallery. Gallery. Yep. Okay. Yes, and uh, which really brought um, to the forefront the story of how the Azorian Whaling uh, influenced the New Bedford Whaling. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that gallery is the only permanent exhibit, I believe, in the United States that honors Portuguese That's contributions correct. to, wow. Wow. to um, mm -hmm. American maritime mm -hmm. history. So her saying was that it was a bridge of whale ships from the Azores to New Bedford, Bedford. That, that mm -hmm. there was you know, so many people coming mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. from the Azores. Right. That's true. Yeah. Um, it was. And she also oversaw the construction of the three Azorean whale boats 
which eventually became the location for the Discovery Center, which is now a, oh, a big part of, of uh, the Whalen Museum. Mm -hmm. Great history. I'm it, sure it was. That a lot of people yeah. don't it know was. that it's just it's buried somewhere or yeah. it's in you know people's she, memories. So that's really she great. founded Casa de Saudad, one of the founding oh, members the of Casa de Saudad okay. Branch Library. So her contribution really ranged from 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 Dartmouth to the communities in New Bedford mm -hmm. for literacy with the library to the Whaley Museum and, and the Azorian connection is mm -hmm. very strong. And actually the Azorian connection is strong with several of the women mm -hmm. um, that are in, in this yeah. program. Right. So you have a very diverse group, obviously. From yes, <laughs> yes. Of, of it's, so, it, it's so exciting. It's mm -hmm. so exciting. And when their families come up and find out about the project and want to contribute to it, it's it's even more exciting. Mm, that's great. So I'm sure maybe out there in the audience, people watching, there might be some people that have information on that so they can contact you, Sarah? That yes. Um, we're hoping that people are th thinking, oh, did they include and want right. to give us names? They can contact me at the Whaling Museum, Sarah Rose, at the Whaling Museum, mm -hmm. and um, we'd be happy to take their names for consideration. Mm -hmm. now, the other thing to keep in mind is to just look out for our announcement of when we'll launch the trail, and that will be coming up in the summer of 2018. That's great. So, wow, in a whole year, all of this has been accomplished. A whole that's, year. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. From, yeah, really you know, excited. an idea right. to actually... <laughs> You know, and a you dream, know, as you wish, say, yeah. a wish yeah. to kind of get this, you know, really off the ground and running in really a short, relatively short period of well, time. Well, I can't say how thrilled I am that the Whaling Museum will be housing this yes. because it will mean that it will constantly be refreshed mm -hmm. and continued and really become a significant part of the history of the South Coast. Right. No, it's definitely, definitely something that's needed. It's definitely something mm -hmm. that people for generations hopefully will be able to learn you know mm -hmm. more about and maybe keep adding to it someday. Yes, absolutely. And I think yes. after um, as time goes on because there's I'm sure it was hard to choose from all you know all the women that we have but it sounds like we have an amazing group of women mm -hmm. already so really yes. excited to see the finished product you know in the next upcoming summer for the yeah. yeah. official yeah. launch. I'm yeah. excited too because yeah. I know I, the ones that I've read I learned things you know, that I didn't know about, yeah. about, and you know. I, I just want to add, too, that sure, we please. really, to acknowledge the, the local histories that had already been done mm -hmm. by the spin, all the Spinner publications, yes. all yeah. of Peggy Medeiros' uh, lectures and mm. books, um, Arthur Mata's work, Judy Lund's work, the ODA, the Lead Old Dartmouth Historical yeah. Society sketches, yeah. all of that work had mm -hmm. been done by such, by such um, accurate and, and committed his local historians that it just made this job easier. Lee Blake's work at New Bedford Historical Society mm -hmm. and the Martha Briggs Education Club, everything was in place really and done so well that it just mm -hmm. made my job so much easier. Right. And the 10 other researchers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that was helpful. I'm sure you needed you know, assistance doing that because I'm sure it could be overwhelming at times, but it's, it's fun, I'm sure, it's fun. to put it all it's together. Fun. Great. So coming up, we have a lot of exciting things. So that's yes. great for summer 2018. So that's wonderful and things that people can be contacting you. So we'll make sure that your thank information you. is that's there, great. you know, at the end. And it's it's really, really exciting project. Mm -hmm. So thank you all, you know, for being here. Thank you for putting this idea together because I think you. it's it's so important because it's, you know, we don't want to be an afterthought all the time. You know, what right. about the women like we right. did with yeah. our sister school? What about the girls? That's yeah. how that started. Yeah. Is what about yeah. the girls? Yeah, what about the girls? So right. it's kind of the same thing so that it's, it's just yeah. happening because, you know, as you said, you know, women are there now. We're, you know, finally, mm -hmm. I think, being heard. Our voices are heard. And, you know, every day you turn around and you hear different things for a variety of reasons, mm -hmm. you know, about women. So I think yeah. to have this, you know, even though this kind of came on beforehand, right. the timing, I think, is perfect. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> to, to get this out there, and not only for the girls and women, but for everybody in our community, yes. as well as, you know, other communities, you know, in our area. So, and the and hope is that it will be an integrated history, mm -hmm. that um, it will not stand on its own, but really be part of a bigger story. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great work. I think it's a great inspiration for everyone out there. And, you know, anything else that you want anybody to know about anything you have coming up or how to get in touch with you or any other ideas? you like to share? I think the overall effect, we hope the overall effect, will really give everyone a sense of pride in the part of the world we live in. Mm -hmm. And so often the South Coast has been overlooked and um, we're at the cutting edge. Yeah. 
-hmm. at yes. least in this area. Yeah. So yes, we are. Watch and out. Watch <laughs> out, because I'm, I'm really excited to see that art project that <laughs> comes out. That comes yeah. out, and what and what that's going to yeah. be. So that's, yeah. that's really we exciting. We did look, as you mentioned earlier, at projects in Boston mm -hmm. and in New York, and of course, we we're just thinking those big glitzy cities, and they have such amazing stories. And um, we won't do nearly as much. And as we've gotten involved with the stories of women from this region, we have nothing to be ashamed of. Like our right. stories are so rich and wonderful and deep and varied and uh, and national stories. Mm -hmm. um, we stand tall right next to New yeah. York and Boston. Yes, we do. <laughs> right. Right. Yes, of course. Well, great. Well, thank you all, you know, for being here. We appreciate you telling us about your project. Thank you so thank much you for, for having us. So yeah. well, thank, yeah. thank you again and thank you for watching Voices of Women.